so I decided this year that we would launch a new festival called WOW, Women of the World. Uh, it's the 100th anniversary of International Women's Day, but even if it wasn't, I feel that there is a conversation that is accelerating again about women's rights in the world. And so we're doing a very large festival, three days of conversations, concerts, um, debates, things called Wow Bites, which are little tiny sort of five and ten minute in, um, intersections done by women of all kinds. And um, we're really excited about it. We think it's going to be very important in the UK. Well, we're bringing people together to celebrate, first and foremost, what women are doing. And they're doing an amazing amount of things right across the world. But we also want people, women to share with each other what they're doing, because some of the projects that are happening in Africa, in India, in Eastern Europe, they're of real fascination and importance to women in other parts of the world, because they're examples of ways you can do things that are, are lateral in the way that they've been approached. So there's a lot of learning, shared learning, I think, that's important. I think people also aren't networked with each other enough and women in the cultural sector are separated from women in science, women from science are separated from women in law, and so it's about companionship. Um, and then finally, it's about creating a provocation and agitation to say that these conversations are necessary and have to happen now, because equal rights are still a long way away from being achieved. And there's an illusion in the West that somehow you know, we've reached a comfortable state that we can all live with, not so. And the more that in the countries that appear comfortable, we say, well, do you know, the rest of it can just be left to its own devices, trickle down eventually. The more you're leaving women in Afghanistan or in Pakistan or anywhere where women's rights are really contested, the more you're leaving those women to fend for themselves. And it's, it's not on. There's always an accusation if you have a celebration of this kind that you will preach to the converted. And the first thing I would say is, what's wrong with that? the converted need to be supported to carry on fighting the fight and spreading the word. And actually good converted people with a great message convert other people by word of mouth. So there's nothing wrong with a festival where people with lots of chips on their shoulder come together to celebrate those chips. Um, but of course it's also about real bringing new audiences to think about this. And I've found that uh, particularly young women uh, and young women from right across class backgrounds and economic backgrounds are coming together to talk about this. We did lots of meetings. I invited women of all kinds and young girls as well to come and meet and talk about what issues they thought were important for women today, including whether they even wanted to use the word feminism, which some of them don't. I mean, we've put it down as, is feminism an F word? And if so, you know, do you want to use it? Um, so I'm hoping by informality of approach and a less you know, it's not a political party, you haven't got to join it with a certain manifesto of do's and don'ts. It's about collaborating around the idea of this simple topic of equal rights. There's one lecture which a, a comedian broadcaster, Sandy Tosbrick, is giving called, you know, post-feminism, um, question mark, you know, what's it all about? And actually her argument is that we're not post-feminist. It's an ironic comedy lecture, really, saying, it's all very well going, well, we know we've done that now. I mean, what, we've, we've done racial equality? Is that, are we post-racial? Are we, I, I don't believe, we're, are we post-poverty? Is there such a thing as a, you know, post-poverty agenda? No, we're not post. We're still in the same throes. But there is an interesting thing about words. You know, words depreciate in value when they're overused or when they're abused. And feminism as a word was very um, attacked. And at that attack has stuck and a lot of people find it very frightening to use the word feminism. So it's a debate actually around is there a different word, do you need a different word or can we just resurrect that one and use it? Um, we'll see what the conference says but you know women's a good word and equal rights is a great phrase. Well when I've been in India which I have been recently uh, I've found, or, or Jordan, you know, that actually some of the countries where women's rights are much more overtly challenged, the women are much more articulate about, in a simple way, about why it has to be addressed, uh, because it's such a clear-cut issue. And I've found that Brazil is another country where the machismo culture is very stated, and so they are very eager to talk about why the whole society 
needs women's rights. And I find that a very useful learning uh, position for, for the UK, because too often in the UK, the conversation becomes really about what women's needs are. And it's not really about what women's needs are, although it is of course about that, it's about what society's needs are. For society to change, women's rights have got to come to the top of the story, because that is not a marginalised minority group, it's half of the world. But when I set out to create WOW, I was basing it on my hunch that these were conversations that women were urgently now needing to have again, and men. But I didn't know that for certain. It was a feeling that, you know, and also it was to do with me feeling, look, I'm a really senior woman in the arts. You look around you, the arts landscape hasn't changed very much from when I was a young woman. And um, what are we doing about it and what am I doing about it? So I, I knew that I personally felt it was an important thing to do. I didn't expect the avalanche of, my God, you know, we really need to talk about this, thank goodness it's happening, let, we want to be there, let us contribute. So I was surprised but thrilled by how much came back immediately about people needing this gathering space. And um, putting a, well, it's the biggest venue in London, and it's the biggest arts venue probably anywhere in the world in terms of a united site, saying that this is going to talk about everything to do with women and the culture in which we all, which we all operate for three days exclusively. It's been a big statement to make and people have, I've learned that people want it. We've put a lot of emphasis on music during this festival because music is a way that people come together and enjoy themselves. You know, it's a way of celebrating very simply, it's very unifying. Um, but it, it also shines a light on the fact that considering that there is a, a, a bursting a pamperful of amazing musical product right across the world, it's really disappointing how few women are heading up bands, how few women are getting recording contracts, how few women are leaders in the industry. You can name the ones that are. And it's, it's not changing quickly enough. And, you know, the number of women who came to these meetings and said, I went to university or I went to college with my guitar, or, you know, particularly my guitar, thinking, great, I'll join a band, and were told, well, we don't want a woman in my band, we don't want a girl in my band. And it was really interesting, the prejudice, even in this generation. It's, it feels just the same. So it's, it's really, you know, very, very important that women perform for each other and perform as role models for each other. You know, PJ Harvey is just one... A, a lifelong achievement award at the NME and, and thank goodness but there's so few so that's an important thing that showing women it's possible and, and telling them to get and, and move on and do it there's some really great debates that we're doing um, from the whole fetishism about ageing and the kind of the way that women endlessly are directed to themselves to sort of to think that their, their brand, their personal brand is diminished as they get older. I mean, it's, a, it's a huge issue that. But also we're doing something um, inspired by Eve Ensler, who's writing a new whole set of monologues uh, around the idea of girls as, in, as an, endangered, an, an endangered species. Um, so having a lot of 14, 15 and 16 year old girls there debating their future, that's of great interest. And then we've got Shami Chakrabata, who's one of the great speakers on the idea of liberty. We've got Susie Orbach, who's one of the great speakers around the whole idea of women's bodies. Um, we've got Helena Kennedy, who's one of the great kind of advocates for where the law stands in relationship to women's rights or doesn't stand. And, you know, they're, they're fiery speakers. They're, they're really up for it. We've got, a, you know, a whole host of them. And then we've got Theresa May, who's um, Home Secretary. And um, we've got Caroline Lucas, the first leader of the Green Party. So it's, it's packed. Male voices are important because it's not about women, it's about society as a whole. Women are directly affected by it on a personal level, on an economic level, um, on, an opportunity, on an opportunity level, but men are affected by it because holding on to power b blunts sensitivity and it also prevents men from having a wider way that they would work with their own lives, family lives, personal lives, 
professional lives, etc. And I think it's impossible for men to talk about wanting the world to be more liberated, as in the Middle East, if then, unless they're going to have a really serious conversation about what that means for women's rights. And if they're going to have that conversation, then can they have it at home as well as abroad? Um, we're doing a Sunday morning session with three great men about bringing out their feminist side. But it's really for them to talk about the real dilemmas you've got about trying to address those issues of equality whilst enjoying the life that you've got. Um, it's a very similar conversation to, to, you know, in the West, we might, might want to talk about um, global warming and sustainability and what are we going to give up in order to achieve that. So you need men's voices at the table and also we need their support. I think men and women have got to be much more conscious of when they keep being a slight coward around uh, generalised sexism and when they need to step forward very strongly about misogyny because you know there's casual sexism and there's real misogyny and they both exist quite strongly in our society and unless m men and women choose to really care about board equality or what the budget did to, to most of the women workers in this country who are part-time, what the cuts in local authorities are going to do to childminding issues. You know, unless we talk about those things overtly, then we're letting a few people carry that torch and then they get marginalised for being the only people who ever speak out about it. So more courage would be good. Um, obviously, I'm thrilled that Baba has you know, been clear straight away that he wanted to support women's voices by being there, creating a concert around it and so on. Um, so more women being active and more men being active.